Good afternoon. Time to check in on those markets uh, coming to you live from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in Santon. Starting off with things on the Asian side, we did see a bit of a mixed performance there as investors search for direction. But as we look at the markets, the Japanese markets, uh, the Nikkei and mainland Chinese markets, a little bit higher. The Nikkei up about eight tenths of a percent. In China right now, we have authorities trying to repel a COVID flare up, which uh, some investors are saying could test Beijing's strategy when it comes comes to uh, mitigating some of those uh, uh, effects that we did see from the hard lockdown. Nonetheless, as we look at uh, what else is happening, U.S. markets are closed for the holidays. But then uh, the other concern is that uh, when you look at U.S. markets and elsewhere, investors are starting to see those signs of a slowdown, whether you are looking at um, consumer spending as well as uh, manufacturing. And in this, uh, some are saying, uh, apparent signs of uh, weakness so that is something we're going to be keeping uh, abreast of and, and looking at but to talk to us about uh, how we're kicking off the second half of the year so far we are joined by gary boyson from rent swiss uh, gary thank you so much for your time so let's look in on the jsc so it's about what call it the first we want to call it the first trading uh, day officially, but let's look at it as a first week so far for the month of July. How are we looking so far? Oh, very, very, very positive. As you said, uh, we've got the US markets closed this evening, but we, we did have the S&P 500 up uh, over 1% on Friday. Uh, so I think that lifted sentiment a little bit. Yeah, mixed Asian markets this morning, but some of that volume would have come out of, the, come out of them. And, uh, and overall, yeah, pretty, pretty positive across, across the board. We're seeing a big, a big recovery in some of the commodity counters, so the likes of Implats uh, up almost almost 5%. Uh, you've got uh, Amplats also doing well, Sassel up over 5%, so some of those oil and gas companies doing well. Uh, we've got Process and Naspers taking a little bit of a back seat. They, they fell slightly, but that was obviously after the, the big run-up that we saw last week on the announcement that they would do a little bit of financial engineering to try and narrow the discount. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the currency dynamics. I mean, looking at the rand at this particular point, sixteen twenty-five thereabout. Yeah. What we can, what can we say about the dollar's performance, especially when we look back at the first half of the year, and then I suppose even tying it in with the rand here. Well, the, the dollar has been the, the place to be for the for the first half of this year. There's no question about that. Uh, it's it's the traditional safe haven trade, and obviously with the I think the concerns around uh, what the Bank of Japan is doing in terms of yield capping um, and and the idea that global interest rates are rising, uh, the, the yen hasn't been the same safe haven that it ha has been in the past. So we've seen a, a rush into dollars. If you look at something like the dollar index, which measures uh, uh, the dollar versus six of its major trading partners, it's sitting at around 105 at the moment. So uh, the dollar is very, very strong. And that's uh, certainly helping to, to make the, the rand dollar pair not look good for South Africans. Uh, so we closed, closed the week at about 1650. Um, it is strengthening today. So we're seeing the rand come back a little bit. But uh, a lot of this is just concerns around uh, load shedding and uh, and potential uh, and its potential impact on on growth in south africa so we have ppc releasing their financials and it's quite interesting when you look at a sort of the historical performance of it mm. this company probably 2007 the mid 30s just before the 2010 uh, construction boom world cup boom i mean did you ever have a conviction about this particular company i mean mid 30s to where it's trading now in a price range of around two rand somewhere there uh, PBC is a, it w has always been a very established company in our market. I think it's a 130-year history uh, that, you, that you have in PPC. But uh, you know, looking at, at South Africa and, and the, I think the construction environment in South Africa over the last 10 or 15 years, we, we haven't been buyers of PPC. I, I mean, yeah, I was thinking about it. I might have traded it on behalf of mm. clients, uh, you know, just on an execution basis. But certainly, we've never we've never held it in portfolios, and uh, we've never, um, yeah, we, I've never, I think, actively recommended it to anyone. And I think uh, the reason is that PPC is very reliant on uh, you know recovery in the construction sector as a whole uh, we have seen a, a wonderful spike in their sales you know post COVID as uh, you know I suppose that home improvement trend really took hold uh, I mean the results today they did mention a normalization of that effect and, and they're seeing a little bit of a drop off and I mean it's a company that's paying down debt and, and definitely getting in better shape but uh, you know I think one they've always had to compete with uh, you know very very cheap imports uh, from overseas and uh, there's also Sapak who, who, who's uh, kind of the up-and-coming uh, uh, cement uh, manufacturer in the sector, um, and yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting. I think they're doing everything they can to to almost uh, you know protect the business. They've sold off some non-core assets, uh, and it is looking like it's in a in a, in a better position. But uh, yeah, not not one that we've ever held just 
from from a macro viewpoint of view that without uh, you know significant infrastructure spending and an infrastructure program that is going to be implemented in South Africa it's difficult to see where a construction boom will come from what are you seeing when it comes to the biggest risks and challenges going into the second half of the year uh, is that locally or internationally? I think locally, yeah. Yeah, lo locally, uh, the, the load shedding is, is a real concern. So uh, the idea that uh, that we have level six load shedding for a couple of days and, and then it kind of moves back to level four, I don't think it's going to move the needle in terms of uh, growth expectations in South Africa. Um, it's, I don't think it's going to particularly spook the, the credit ratings agencies either. But if we see a, you know, a, a protracted uh, you know, energy interruption and, and level six and you know, potentially level eight coming, um, this is going to impact South African growth. I think that will, uh, we, we've seen a correlation between the local currency and, and the, the, the load shedding announcements. And I think the, the big concern is that, uh, you know, our, our first quarter GDP growth numbers, uh, you know, showed that the manufacturing sector was actually doing fairly well. Now, in a rising interest rate environment, so we, we have to assume that the South African Reserve Bank is going to continue to increase interest rates. And, uh, and then also seeing, you know, uh, energy, or at least electricity supply interruptions, um, that I think is going to on the, the manufacturing sectors. If commodity prices don't hold up and we see um, the, the international markets moving into, a, international economies at least, moving into a recession and commodity prices falling, I, th I think we might be in for economically a very, very tough half uh, in South Africa. Yeah. Before I let you go, just quickly, we've got FOMC and non-farm payrolls on Friday. Which one are you going to be paying close attention to? Oh, yeah, I think you've got to watch both of them, but I think I think probably the FOMC minutes are going to be more important. So, you know, if you look at the non-farm payroll numbers, uh, the expectations are that you're going to see a moderation at the moment. Obviously, that will change into the number. I think they're expecting about 270,000 new jobs added. Um, the unemployment rate is, is expected to stay, stay stay stable at about 3.6 percent, and and average hourly earnings, which I think is going to be the key number, are, are expected to, to to actually drop from 5.2 to 5 percent. Yeah. Now, it's very difficult to read that number, and that's why. I it's not going to be that important this this time around because um you just don't know what the market is looking for. Do they want a, a weak US labor market, which is going to moderate inflation, or do they want a strong labor market uh, saying that uh, you know things are not so bad in the underlying economy, yeah. but then you've got to, you've got to assume that uh, the Fed is going to hike interest rates and try and squash that. So it's very difficult to read how the, the market's going to react to the number this weekend. So I think all, all focus on the Fed minutes and, and what uh, what's going on in the minds of the Fed governors. All right, Gary, let's leave it there. It would have been nice to actually, I suppose, we can discuss this on your, your next appearance where we try to decide whether which matters for the markets is it the prospect of a recession or is it high inflation and I wonder which of the two is quite scary but that will leave for a conversation for another day thank you so much to uh, Gary Boyson from Rent Swiss unpacking the latest uh, market developments for us as we mentioned Wednesday those FOMC minutes and of course those non-farm payrolls numbers on Friday